Hello, I am Dr. Vikas Gupta, Director Hand to Shoulder Clinic. Today we will be talking about decurrence tenosynovitis. In this disease what happens, there is a pain in the wrist. If we see the wrist like this, pain is along the thumb, this is the maximum area of the pain. It happens because there is an inflammation of the tendons here and pain increases on the movement of the thumb. If we see the same thing on a model, in the model, uh, if you can focus here, you can see the, this is the tendon which moves the wrist, which goes under the pulley. And whenever there is a fluid collection or inflammation, the movement of tendon is restricted. So whenever there is a movement of the wrist, pain increases. This problem is very common in nursing mothers and grandmothers who are taking care of their grandchildren because they are carrying the baby in this position in the lap. What happens? There is an inflammation in the tendon which causes pain on the movement of the wrist. Though most of the time this disease is self-limiting, especially in nursing mothers when children become old enough, they start walking, the pain becomes less because inflammation decreases. But in some cases when disease is not associated with pregnancy or taking care of the children uh, related to occupations like repeated movements, repeated use of the computer, repeated use of the tools or hammers which causes inflammation here. In these cases the problem sometimes may not be self-limiting and may persist. So there are three ways to treat this problem. First one is we treat the patient with physiotherapy medicines, physiotherapy in the form of ultrasonics, heart fermentation and exercises, some medicines, anti-inflammatory to decrease the pain and inflammation. Suppose four to six weeks, this doesn't help. Then we have to move to the second step. Second step is usually giving a steroid injection locally. That means we give the steroid injection into the sheath. This is a local steroid injection. It has minimal of systemic side effects. What steroid does, it decreases the inflammation in the tendon sheath. So the swelling decreases and tendon can glide properly. So most of the time there is a response to the steroid shot but suppose two or three steroid shots are not relieving the problem then we have to resort to the third method that is surgery. In surgery what we have to do we have to open it with a very small incision. We open the sheath and free the tendon in the sheath so that it can glide properly and remove some amount of inflammatory tissue we remove it at that time. Out of 100 patients it is 5 to 7 patients who would require surgery otherwise most of the patient will be better by first and second method we do surgery by two methods first is by open method in which we directly give incision on the sheath and open the sheath and clean the process uh, clean the sheath so the tendon can glide pr uh, properly second method is endoscopic method or minimally invasive method in this method which is a minimally invasive method we go inside the uh, tissues and do the surgery. We use 4 millimeter scope which is in which we give a incision around 4 to 6 millimeter away from the disease area and we do the surgery with a minimally invasive method uh, and everything is done with the help of 6 to 8 millimeter incision. The advantages are the pain is less and we are away uh, from the nerve area so chances of nerve involvement is minimized by using this method. So I'll say uh, decurrence disease though it can uh, surgery is required in only 5 to 7 percent of the patient most of the patient physiotherapy is good enough even after surgery we recommend physiotherapy so that gliding of the tendon is proper. So, as I said, physiotherapy is very important in decurrence tenosynovitis treatment. So, today we have Dr. Shashi with us. He is our chief physiotherapist. He will explain some phys uh, physiotherapy tips about decurrence tenosynovitis. Hi, Shashi. Hello, sir. Uh, can you tell us something about uh, some simple exercises for uh, decurrence tenosynovitis? Yes, we have to do some uh, simple exercises for decurrence at home as you can see here this is the area painful area of the decurrence so only thing is you you have to rest your forearm on the table in the resting position and you have to lift your thumb up as much as you can same way you can lift it sideways as much as you can these are the two simple exercises 
for the decal vanes. Apart from that, you can make the circle with the each fingers so that the tendons moves glides inside the canal. So this you can do like this. Apart from that, if pain, pain reduces and you feel better, you can do the counting exercises for each finger like this so that its mobi mobility of the tendon would eventually increase. We can do some massage over the tendon area. You can take any moisturizer cream or any uh, uh, analgesic cream, mix it with the few amount in a few amount and you have to do massage from the digital to the proximal area. So like this, you have to do one or two minutes every day morning and the evening. This would definitely reduce your pain. Thank you Dr. Shashi for useful tips for uh, physiotherapy of the Decavins disease. As I said, physiotherapy is a very important thing in treating Decavins disease. So if we follow the tips, you should get better. If person is not getting better by physiotherapy, then one must always meet the local physician or orthopedic surgeon or a hand surgeon and get the proper treatment about it. Thank you. Thank you.